I am confident that this recipe will put you on the path to achieving the pizza of your dreams with an amazing balance between crunch, chew, and digestibility. Just to clarify, this recipe has been specifically formulated for home pizza ovens. I'm referring to smaller, portable ovens that are designed for use in backyards. They typically have a stone or ceramic baking surface and can reach high temperatures in excess of 900 degrees, similar to what you'd find in a traditional wood-fired pizza oven. Okay, let's make some dough. The ingredients that we'll use for this dough are fine sea salt, room temperature filtered water, active dry yeast, and a good all-purpose flour. Now I know there's some people out there shaking their heads right now in disgust because I'm using all-purpose flour and not double zero Italian flour. The reasons for this is that all-purpose flour is way easier to find in the US. It's also way cheaper. And I've baked a ton of pizza with both types of flour and the difference between the two isn't really enough to fuss over. That said, you are more than welcome to substitute double zero flour in this recipe. It's gonna work just fine. We're gonna start this recipe by making a poolish eight to 12 hours in advance. If you're not familiar with the term poolish, it's simply a pre-ferment or a starter for your pizza dough. Poolish is made by mixing equal parts of flour to water with a little bit of yeast. For my poolish, I'm going to use 300 grams of filtered water, a heavy pinch or about three fourths of a gram of active dry yeast and 300 grams of flour. Mix it until it forms a very wet dough. Cover and let it rest at room temperature for at least eight hours and up to 12 hours. Your poolish should more than double in size and have a very active fermentation when you go to use it for your pizza dough. When it reaches this point, I'll go ahead and grab the bowl for my stand mixer and add 325 grams of room temperature filtered water. Then I'll add in all of my poolish that's been fermenting for about 12 hours now and give it a little stir. Next, I'll add 700 grams of flour and 25 grams of fine sea salt. I'm gonna mix that on low for about five minutes or just until all of the loose flour is absorbed. At that point, I'm gonna let it rest for 10 minutes and then I'll come back and mix it again for another five to 10 minutes. If you don't have a stand mixer, that's okay. You can do this all by hand. It's gonna take a little longer and the dough's gonna to need to rest a bit more, but this recipe is perfectly achievable with mixing by hand. Regardless of how you mix it, the end result should be a smooth and very elastic dough that doesn't shear or tear when you pull on it. We're gonna cover this up and let it rest at room temperature for one to two hours. After that, I'm gonna portion it into the dough ball size of choice. I like using 250 grams or 9.5 ounce balls for a 12 inch pizza. So again, this recipe is going to yield six dough balls. After portioning it, I'll shape the balls by folding them in half and rotating 90 degrees and repeating until a tight, smooth ball forms. Pinch the bottom closed and place into a greased container with a lid. I'll then put my dough balls in the fridge where they'll continue to ferment for at least 24 to 72 hours. Remove your dough from the fridge at least one hour before you plan on making pizza. It's important to let it proof a little longer at room temperature before you make pizza with it. Then just stretch and top however you like. You're gonna wanna cook it at 750 to 900 degrees in your home pizza and it should take between 75 seconds and maybe three minutes depending on your oven. The end result is a beautifully browned, crispy, delicate, and flavorful pizza crust. I hope you give this recipe a shot. I hope it turns out amazing, and I hope you hit that subscribe button. Love you lots.